Okay, looks like we are indeed up, running and live. A very good evening to you all from Dubai. Phil Pendlebury here, and I hope you're having a super mega large day. And to those of you joining us from the Middle East, Assalamu alaikum, mahaba. Good to have you with us too. So here we go, my first official stream on Nuendo 13. And it's going to be relatively short today. I'm going to show you through a few of the new features exclusive to Nuendo 13 uh, regarding dialogue and ADR. So I'm going to take you through from start to finish. I'm going to go step by step using a small audio file. And we're going to clean it up. Uh, we're going to match some tonal qualities. We're going to separate some of the parts, put the dialogue in, and then show you how the ADR reader works, which is right at the end, but that's actually really interesting and really useful. Um, so, yeah, there's quite a few new features. We haven't got time to go through absolutely everything now, but I've got a practical example here, and we're all set up and ready to go. So let's move over to uh, Nuendo itself, and let's show you what we're going to do. So uh, here we are in Uendo 13. You can see my little project here. We'll get into that in a second. Just going to quickly mention again the ADR reader. Please do stick around for that. It's really useful. We're going to do that at the end because we're going to take this whole project from start to finish. And the ADR reader, in case you didn't know, enables you to control your ADR from a browser or a tablet. Well, the browser within your tablet. So if you're using an iPad, etc. Um, I'm going to show it on my local browser today, but it's the same thing. And uh, I need to put my headphones on because I need to be able to hear what we're doing today. Sometimes we do these streams, we don't actually have any audio, uh, but in this case, there's definitely audio involved. So headphones on, and let's see if we've got audio. Hello, can I help you? Yes, we have. Right then, camera off and let's move into it. So we're working on this particular audio file here, and it's noisy. Um, it might be an idea for you guys to put headphones on as well here so that you can hear this clearly. Uh, we can zoom in, I think. And there you can see the file itself. We'll zoom back out again in a second when we get to it. So have a quick listen to the file. It's um, just me talking. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's have a look and see what's going on in Studio One. Ah, looks like someone's reading the news. Here in Studio Two, we're recording an advert for a new movie which is coming out next year. Okay, so hopefully if you have your headphones on, you can hear that there's some noise in the background um going on here let's hello. let's hello can i help you it's basically an ac noise a fan noise that's going on in the background so we want to get rid of that now as you probably know there is a whole bunch of expensive ways to do this and some of them are very very effective i'm not going to mention any names one of them being of course well i'll mention one name spectral layers if you happen to have the pleasure of using that, um, the unmixed noisy speech is extremely clever. Um, but now we have a simple plugin built in to Nuendo. So let's just put that in action and see how it copes. So here's the noisy file one more time. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. Not going to play it all. And we'll bring up the mixer and Hopefully we can see here, yes we can. And I'm going to look for voice separator, which is there. And there it is. That's the new voice separator plugin, which is part of Nuendo 13. So we've got two controls here. It's very simple, dialogue and background. And I think you can guess what's going to happen. Let's play the file. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's have a look and see what's going on in Studio One. 
Pretty amazing. Straight away there, we've got rid of all that background noise. Um, and just to show, you know, the other side of it, just in case it's relevant. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's have a look and see what's going on in Studio One. So it's really straightforward. Dialogue, background, and we don't want the background, so we've just turned up the dialogue as hard as it'll go, and we've turned the background off. And there we have a clean file. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things. Pretty impressive, to be honest. So, how would we actually apply that to the track? Well, there's a few ways you could just render it now. Um, but the other way, which is quite nice to do it, is to use uh, direct offline processing, which we'll be using throughout this video. So we may as well delve into it right now. So let's close the mixer down. And we'll select the file. One more time, just check. Hello, can I help you? Hmm. There it is. And I've got uh, direct offline processing set up on my F7 key. I believe that's the default. So we'll bring up the direct offline processing window. You can see it here. I've got this saved. Um, actually, we don't need that. I've got this saved as a favorite here, but basically we just go to plugins. It's not under process, this one. It's under an actual plugin. So you can go to plugins and you can search again for voice separator. There it is. So this is the same procedure that we had just now. And we can audition that by pressing this little button here. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and... And you might notice uh, just when I started there, there's a tiny, tiny little second, well, I say second, it's less than a second where it, it kind of catches up. Uh, but once that's done, it's, it's all fine. Hello, can I help you? There we go. Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's have a look and see what's going on in Studio One. Ah, looks like someone's reading... So we've got it set how we want it. All we do now is hit apply. You can see it's doing its stuff. And that's it. So now we can either discard that, start again, or we can just close the window. And you can see there's a little icon here. Let's just double zoom in. Hopefully you can see that. There's a little icon in the top corner which designates that uh, there's an offline process involved. But what we can do now, because we're happy with that, let's just play it one more time. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of... And there we have it. So the file's been completely cleaned using direct offline processing. And there is um, a little icon here that shows you that there's a, um, a direct offline process involved. So let's zoom back out for a second because I want to show you what happens next. We make sure we've got this file selected. And then we head up to our menu, which you'll notice I haven't got any menus actually displaying here. So this is a little trick you might want to uh, bear in mind for future. Uh, you can hide the menu completely by using this button here where it says show and hide menu bar. Uh, but then if we go up to the top and if you hit the Alt key, I've got it on my mouse, then we see the menu briefly, only until we use something, and then it disappears again. So what we're going to do, make sure that file is selected. We're going to go up to the menu, and we're going to go audio, make direct offline processing permanent. Are you sure? This cannot be undone. And there we are. So now if we zoom back in, let's do the double zoom. You can see that the little icon on, on the right of the file here is gone, uh, which means that that file is now kind of set in stone. Let's have a quick listen. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's have a look and see what's going on in Studio One. So there we have it. So that's step one. 
of today's process. So we've got rid of the noise. Don't forget what we're doing today is using only tools that are available in Nuendo, no external tools whatsoever. So let's move on to something else. So we'll, uh, we'll stay zoomed in for the time being. I want to play you a, another file. So let's have a listen to this. Please can you take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, especially using death rays, laser beam. So this one's noise free, which is great. Uh, but if you compare the two... Hello, can I help you? Hmm. You'll notice that the kind of EQ, the general EQ settings... Please can you take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, especially using... You'll notice that the EQs are slightly different. Now, this could have been done on a different microphone. It could just be a different take, and you've set things up slightly differently. So what we're going to do now is try to match as close as we can those two EQs, and without using an EQ itself. So what we're going to do here is look at tonal match. So let's say we want to match the EQ of the second file because it's got less boominess and less bottom end. Please can you take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or... And we want the main file, this one. Hello, can I help you? To sound similar to that. There's a few ways you can do this, but what I'm going to do here is once again, let's zoom out. I'm going to zip up to the menu and we're going to go to audio and we're going to go to sound references. And now we can zoom back in again. And you can see we've got this panel called the sound references dialog. So the one that we want as our reference is the one that I've just played, this one. Please can you take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, especially... So simply we're going to add that as our reference. Now you can add as many of these as you want, but in this case we're just going to use that one. And let's audition it. Please can you take a note not to allow any bludgeoning... Okay, that's cool. So how do we get that onto here? I'm going to leave that panel open now. And once again, we go back to direct offline processing. I'm going to select the file that we want to work on, which is this one. And I'm going to press my F7 key to bring up the direct offline processing dialog. And what we're going to do here is go to the sound profiler plugin. So if we type profile here, you'll see it comes up. So the settings on this, again, quite simple. I'm not going to worry about ambience uh, today because we haven't really got any, but it's all about this color here. And what we've got is we've got the ability, you can see that that will, let's move that over a little bit so you can see the whole thing. There we go. This is the target, as it were. This is the, you know, the sound that we want to try and replicate. So I chose it earlier, as you saw. So we can either open or close that. If there was other, we, other uh, references, we could drop down and select them here. And what we're getting here is at the top, we're getting a kind of display of the reference file. And at the bottom, we're getting a display of the selection, which should be this one. So let's have a listen and see what it thinks. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's so as you can see, it's trying its best to match the reference to the selection. Or should I say the selection to the reference? <laughs> okay, so I'm not playing anything within Nuendo itself here. All I'm doing is using the built-in audition um, process from 
direct offline processing. So one more time, and then what we'll do is we'll have a fiddle with the amount and tone, and you should be able to hear the difference. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's have a look and see what's going on in Studio One. Ah, looks like someone's reading the news. Here in Studio Two, we're recording an advert for a new movie which is coming out next year. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's have a look and see what's going on in Studio One. Ah, looks like someone's reading the news. <laughs> you might get tired of hearing that little uh, excerpt today, but don't worry, there's not too much more to go, actually. Um, so there you go. We've managed to set that up, and we've taken the imprint from the alt box, which was the one with the less bottom end and so on, and we've now got to the stage where we can apply that and it's the same thing. I don't have auto apply on, by the way, and I don't know if you want to use that, maybe if it's something that you're sure about, but in my case, I like to leave it off and I like to do it manually, which we do like this. So we'll hit apply. And we can now close that. And once again, if we zoom right in, you can see the little icon there showing that we've got a direct offline process in action. We'll play the file. Please can you take a note not to allow any bludgeoning. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. That's pretty accurate, to be honest. Uh, I mean, if you put those two together and maybe played with the levels a little bit like I did earlier, I think they would be acceptable. So once again, we are going to go up. Now that I know I'm happy with this, we're going to go up to the menu. Oh, I need to zoom out so you can see it. Up to the menu, press my Alt key. Audio, make direct offline processing permanent. Yes, I am sure. And now we have the finished file. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's have a look and see what's going on in Studio One. Okay, super cool. And don't forget, I know I'm gonna say this a couple more times, but all these things that we're looking at today are actually built in as part of New Ender 13. So you're not paying for any extra tools here. Right, looking at my notes. Uh, yeah, okay. So the next thing I want to look at is the new Detect Silence. Let's get the camera off and move on. And actually, just before we do move on, um, I've forgotten. I did have a question about this, so I need to show that right now um, about the direct offline processing. Let's just quickly go back, and you might have noticed, we'll zoom in, you might have noticed here that when I did the first process, I had a little voice separator button here on the favorites. You've got four banks of those which you can choose, and it's really handy because you can build things up. So we've got voice separator there. If I click that, it automatically sets up what was done earlier on. So if you set up a bunch of plugins, all in a row here, and you can literally just drag those down and turn them into kind of, I don't know what you'd say, maybe kind of presets. They call them favorites here. Um, but yeah, it's really useful. So I used to have some set up. I cleared them all out uh, for the purpose of this video because I didn't want to get you know overly confused uh, while we're live. Right, so we'll discard that. We don't need to do it all again. And we can indeed move on. Oh, doesn't seem to have discarded, of course. Yeah, we discarded the process, but what we need to do now is just remove it there. There we go. So there's nothing, uh, nothing changed about that file now. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll... Right, so we were talking about detect silence. So this is really handy, and it does work 
hand in hand with what's going to come next. So, like I said, the idea of this stream really was to keep it nice and short. I just wanted to show you these kind of four new processes that we've got, but show you from start to finish, um, you know, in working on a specific file. So, yeah, okay, let's move on. Oh, by the way, um, Terry's here. <laughs> If you uh, have any questions, uh, please feel free, fire them down in the comments. Terry will do his best to shout them over and, you know, I'll try and give him a quick clue uh, to be able to answer some of those questions in real time, if not uh, in the chat. If not, you know, feel free to uh, put them down in the comments and we'll answer them. Always answer them. Uh, you'll probably notice, but in all the comments, previous videos, we always answer the comments. All right, let's move. So, detect silence. We're going to select the file here. I'll tell you what we can do. We can remove that now, because that one's just going to get in the way. Let's just remove it completely. We'll just pull this down so it's a bit bigger. And we're still zoomed in, just in case you're wondering. That's what the screen looks like now. I've got my mixer at the bottom with all my groups, which we're not using today. So we'll stay zoomed in. And we're going to go up to the menu once again. Don't need to see this because you've seen it already. Audio advanced. And we're going to go to detect silence. There we go. And whoa, immediately it has done that without us even having to press any buttons. So let's cancel that. Let's show you the full screen and show you what happened there. So up to the top of the screen, Alt key, audio, advanced, detect silence with current settings, or detect silence, there we go. So what we can do here is we can set everything up, leave it as it is, and then the detect silence will do what it does. So I've got it set to dialogue here. This has been much improved, even though it was pretty amazing in the uh, previous version of Nuendo. And I've got it set how I like it. Didn't take much, to be honest. You can use peak levels, but I'm using dialogue. We can mute the gaps, and we can, of course, preview the levels. So let's uh, have a quick play. Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of and you can see that what we've got there is what it says is six different sections, which is basically six lines. And to be honest, I find that that is very, very accurate. I don't think we need to go through all the, um, all the settings here, but in my case, I want to strip the silence. I don't want to keep them as separate events. In this case, we've got a silent, um, we've got a silent audio file. In other words, we've already removed the noise. If you wanted to keep the the kind of non-dialogue parts as separate segments, that would be the background noise. And you may find that useful if you wanted to create a room noise, you know, underneath some other audio or whatever. But in this case. Because we're streaming and we're trying to do this as quickly as possible. We'll just leave it as, it as it is. So there we have it. It's given us an audition of what it thinks is the parts. Come on in and I'll show you some. We're recording lots of voices. To and great. So I'm just going to process that. And look what we've got. This is where things start to get really clever. So what we've now got is each of those lines as separate segments. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's have a look and You get the idea, right? So if we wanted to, we could move them around. We could have done a similar thing with the previous um, file, added that on, you know, basically takes a lot of the work out of the whole process, which is marvelous. 
And of course, the nice thing here is we now have the ability to process that even further. Now you've seen me do this before, and this is not the new to New Endo 13. It was brought in in New Endo 12. But in order to go through the steps, instead of just, you know, a random, oh, this is how you do this and this is how you do that, in order to go through the steps of working with a noisy file, setting the EQ, blah, 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 what we're going to do is use the um, create markers from selected events. And this is really useful. I've got my little ADR track just above there, the marker track, I think. Let's just zoom out, make sure you can see it. That's it there. There's nothing on it. It's blank at the moment. Hopefully, you can still see that, even though there's nothing on it. It's this part here, and it's called ADR. So we make sure we select those events. We can actually even yes, pull, make it a bit bigger. So we're filling the whole screen there now. So we've selected the events. We're going to go up to the menu. Like so. I'm going to press my Alt key. And I'm going to go to Project. Create markers from selected events. Now I can either use the current settings or I can set it up. And then what I'm going to do is set it up here so that you can just see what happens. So mega zoom. And you should now be able to see the dialogue there. So the type of markers I want to create are cycle markers in this case, and you'll see why in a minute. The target marker track is the one I just showed you. So it should be the active marker track. The attribute mapping, well, we can do all sorts with this, and we can even add mapping as well. Not going to do that, not going to mess around, in fact, at all, because you've already seen this in the other video, but you can have a fiddle about with this if you want to. I'm going to leave it as it is. Event name is going to be the description of the marker. The track name is going to be the comment. And if we wanted to, we could, you know, Go to any of these so many different items and map them into what you're going to see inside the ADR marker dialog. So that's it. So all I'm going to do now is hit Add Markers. And now, if I zoom back, you can see now we've got a set of markers that exactly delineate that dialogue, which is what we're going to use next. OK, so you can see that we can easily select those. I'm double clicking on the individual markers here. Of course, this all comes into its own now when we go into the marker dialogue. Uh, Control M, there we have it. Oh, this is basically. I need to just make sure you can see that. There we go. This is basically where we do all our ADR from. If you're familiar with this, you'll know what it is. Once again, we've got a whole bunch of columns that we can decide whether we're going to view them or not. In the description here, you would most likely have maybe the artist or, you know, we can, we can set all those things here. So, for example, on ADR, we could say actor's name. We can actually get rid of this description. We can hide that. Right, so actor's name is all going to be me. Let's just put those in. If these were brought in from other sources, obviously a lot of this would already be there in place. So the only problem we've got here is we don't have the actual dialogue. So we can easily, um, we'll just sort these by ID. We can easily just play each individual part. 
We've got a... Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. We've got um, a pre-roll and a post-roll on there. That's all set up in the dialogue here. And while we've got this dialogue open, um, there's a new feature here on the video section, which is the show black during pre-roll and post-roll. Uh, so what you'll get there, instead of seeing the video itself when you're getting the count-ins uh, for pre-roll and post-roll, uh, you'll just get black, uh, which means that you know, the actor isn't being put off by what comes before or after. Uh, or you may have other reasons to use that. Obviously, we've got no video today, so I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, so we've got a, a, a pre-roll and a post-roll. So if I select one of these and play it, you'll get some before and some after. Some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's have a look and see what's going on in Studio One. So... Next thing I'm going to do is quickly get the dialogue into um, here. It's only a few bits. It'll only take a second. So I've got the script already, and I'm just going to copy these. So we'll go back, and that's hello, can I help you? We're going to go back. Okay, no problem. I've already got them actually using spectral layers to get the transcription, which is a whole other thing we don't have time to do today. But uh, spectral layers ability to do unmix trans transcription. And you basically, maybe we should show you that. But you basically just uh, put the voice in and do unmix transcription. We're nearly there. Have I missed one? Let's just check these. I think I'm, I might have missed one. Hello, can I help you? Hmm. No, that's fine. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things. Okay. Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of... Looks fine. ...some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's have a look and see what... And... ...going on in Studio One. Ah, I can... ...on in Studio One. Ah, looks like someone's... Re yeah, okay, I realise what's happened here. We've got that goes there, I think, and this one goes here, and then we have the final one, which is that one. Let's just check that. Reading the news. Here in Studio 2, we're recording an advert for a new movie. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that, um, the wonders of being live. Yeah, so in order to get that transcription, I used spectral layers, um, the unmixed transcription feature, uh, which is really useful. Uh, so what we can do is just quickly pull that up because it'll only take a second. So we'll pull up spectral layers 10. This is the standalone version. And what I did here, there's, there's a file. Um, you can't hear it at the moment. And we basically just go to Unmix Transcription. OK. Takes a few seconds, uh, but it's much, much faster than it used to be, um, especially if you have a decent graphics card. Again, we've covered this in a previous video, so you know, let's maybe not dwell on it. But just to quickly show you the process, if you happen to have audio that has no transcription. So nearly finished. And there at the bottom, we have the transcription. You might not be able to see that, especially as my camera's in the way, but it doesn't matter. What we can do then is we go to the edit button here. You can see it all. 
and then we can export. And when you export, you can choose various file types, some of which can be automatically brought back into Nuendo. Right, we digress. Let's move on. So just in case, um, you know, it was a little confusing for some reason, shouldn't be, but I just wanted to make sure that this is all clear. So I'm going to zoom out again. I know that this is making things tiny for those of you that are looking on smaller screens. We have a 4K screen here, so this is why, you know, I do a lot of zooming in and out. But just so that you're clear, uh, when I was auditioning those, because of my pre-roll and post-roll, you're hearing some of the previous part as well. We could have changed that, but I've just got it set how I like it. So we're selecting part three here, and I press the play button. Hmm, no problem. And you can see... Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of voices. To... Come and on you in can, and I'll... You can see that the cursor jumped back. So if we, if we select this one... Some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's have a look and see what's going on in Studio One. Ah, looks like someone's... So you can see the cursor jumps back. I've got it set somewhere over here. I've got it set to two, um, 2,000 milliseconds, basically two seconds. So we could change that. Um, maybe we'll just do it, as long as I don't forget to change it back when I'm doing some actual work. We'll change that to 500 pre-roll. So now, hopefully, you'll only get a very short pre-roll. We're recording there lots of voices today. Let's have a look and see what's going on in Studio One. Ah, looks like someone's... And we've still got a two-second post-roll. So one more, and then we're going to move on to the final section. Ah, looks like someone's reading the news. Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things... Yep. Okay. Right, so the final little thing that I'd like to show you here is the ADR script reader. And I've been looking forward to this because this is something that we've been crying out for. Uh, there's been all sorts of convoluted ways uh, to do this, but finally now we can do it in the box. So, well, okay, maybe before I set it up, I should explain. Basically, what this script reader enables us to do is control everything that I'm doing now, like this. Hmm, no problem. All the playback, the recording, and so on, the choosing in a browser. And like I said earlier on, the browser can be within your local machine or it can be an iPad. I've got iPads all over the place here. Uh, I'm not going to try and show you it on the iPad. It works great, but I'm not going to try and show that because that would then mean trying to capture the iPad screen. So we'll do it on the local browser. So yeah, let's, let's get that set up and uh, you can see how it works. So we've got all our ADR settings as we like them. There's nothing else to worry about on the ADR screen. So I'm going to close that down and that's the last we're going to see of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to menu. I've left the big screen on so you can see. So we're at the menu. We're going to right click. We're going to go to studio. ADR script reader setup. And I'll zoom in. And there it is. Now this might look um, a little bit intimidating at first, but actually it's not. It's very, very straightforward, especially if you just watch the, what I'm going to do here and you'll see it's very simple, very straightforward. All right. So the network adapter at the top, I'm choosing to use my actual network adapter. You can choose local host if you're using a local machine, but even if you are using your local machine, the network adapter should still work. If you're having any issues, try switching that around, uh, but that's for the network adapter itself. There's the URL, so that's going to be the actual um, URL that you put into your browser or into your um, iPad browser. 
We have a pin, which we can also, there's a copy buttons here, so we can generate a new one easily enough. We'll just leave that as it is for now. And then we've got the company logo. So let's see if I can quickly find my logo. It should be on my desktop. There it is. So we'll open that. Now, although I've opened it, you won't see that update here. It still shows the Steinberg logo, but not to worry. Incidentally, we also have a QR code you can scan with your um, iPad or whatever, which will do all that we're going to do for you automatically. Uh, let's leave all these as the default, and we're going to sort by position. So we'll copy the URL. We'll remember the password 8286, and we'll hit OK. So 8286. So now what I'm going to do is bring up the browser, paste that in, and can we see that? Let's make sure it is in the center. So 8286 would be the password. And there you can see I've got my little logo there at the top. And at the moment, we're not seeing anything. However, if we drop down this little button here, we can actually see all the script items. So we can select one. And if we press this little button here, which I find really handy to have on all the time, we get a preview of what's before and next. So let's just, okay, you can't see Nuendo at the moment, but if I press this button here. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. And there you get it. So we can then move on to the next part of the script, which we can either use the button here to move up and down. Actually, let's make this a bit smaller. See, the whole thing scales nicely. So if I put that down here, so now you can see Nuendo as well. So bearing in mind that this part of the screen would be on a remote system. So that would be on your iPad or on your laptop or whatever. As long as you're connected to the same network, it all works. So what we do, we'll skip through the lines. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Cut. And you can hear it cut off there because my two second post roll. So let's move to another line. You can see that we're able to select all the parts with the little arrows here, or we can drop down, we can just choose. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's have a look and see what's going on in Studio One. And of course, ah, looks like someone's. Of course, we've got the buttons for um, recording and, and rehearsing. And finally, let's push this back to full screen again. We've also got edit mode. Now, you saw me do that earlier on. You saw me remove this, and you saw me immediately click the edit button up in the top corner here, which is why we had to enter the password. And why did we have to enter the password? Uh, because this enables you to actually edit the script if you want to. You can see I'm just literally typing in there, Studio One, and we'll hit the tick. Let's play that. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's have a look and see what's going on in Studio One. Ah, looks like someone's... So, there you go. I mean, okay, yeah, so I've typed it phonetically, as the saying goes. And if we now go back to the ADR dialog, you can see that that has actually transmitted over to Nuendo. And that just about concludes it. Well, it does completely conclude it, to be honest. Yeah. So thanks a lot for being with us today, those of you that were. And um, for the questions and so on, like I said, feel free to type them on and we'll answer them either in the comments or in the forums as usual. Uh, I thought, you know, that I would go through this from start to finish. Obviously, we could have compressed this whole thing 
down into probably 15 minutes. Uh, but I think it's nice to see the process from start to finish. Also, don't forget about the menu bar thing. Um, we'll just quickly switch over again, just in case um, you're interested. Like I said, a lot of people have been saying about the white menu bar at the top. You know that you can enable the menu on pretty much any of the windows now. But I think it's really nice to just have that menu bar completely gone and then make sure you either assign, um, assign the alt key to a button on your mouse, which I have here on the mouse, or you can just use the alt key itself and up to the top, click the alt key and there you have the menu. And as soon as you've done what you're going to do, it'll disappear again and it keeps the whole screen nice and clear. So there you go. And uh, the other thing was the, the direct offline processing. We skimmed over that today because it's essential to use in a couple of the processes that we've done. But uh, maybe that's something new to you. And if it is, let me know because we'll look at doing a more in-depth tutorial on the direct offline processing. So there you go, New Endo 13, my first st stream, a few hiccups today. But I think we made it through in one piece. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of this. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks a lot, Terry, by the way. Speak soon. Super mega large. Have a good one.